Okay, uh, I feel like we can we can start now. We have a very simple setup here. We have the sprite renderer, the very animator that plays uh, a really simple walking animation. Uh, and the walking animation as of right now is just a simple PNG animation. When it comes to the code, we have three different classes here and the source code for that is in the description. Yeah, and other than that, I also configured the Unity Texture Importer to, you know, set up the pixels per unit and no compression, no filtering. So I'm not gonna do that during this, this live stream because uh, it's automatic. But let's start with taking a look at the texture post-processor. A small correction to my previous devlog, I, I called it Asset Importer, uh, when in reality it's called an Asset Post-Processor. And what it does, it allows us to transform the assets that are being imported to Unity. It has these event functions. In this case, we're using the on post process texture, and it gives us an access to the texture that has been imported to Unity. What we do here, we essentially check if the extension of this file is PNG, and if it's not PNG, uh, we're not interested in it. And then we handle two different types of files. First, we have the pixel map, which is the, the map from the video, and it has to end with a prefix dot map. The other types of files are, I'm calling them weights in the code, but I, I later change that to source. And these are the this is the source animation from the video. So the animation that has the colors overlaid on top of it. So I'm gonna go to A Sprite and I have this map. This is the map from the video. I'm gonna save it in Sprite's skins as a map. So it's alice.map.png. And when I save it and go back to Unity, I loaded it here. This is the map. The script generated a separate scriptable object that contains the lookup information from this map. Going back to the code, if we take a look at this function, which is invoked upon importing a map, it first tries to find a map that already exists for this texture. And it does that based on the name. So it's gonna essentially, if the file is named alice.map, it's gonna search for a scriptable object that's called alice.map. If it doesn't find it, it's gonna create a new one. And then what it does, it essentially reads the pixels from the texture, clears the previous lookup data, uh, it iterates over, because this is uh, like a one-dimensional array of pixels, and we then change this to UV coordinates uh, by essentially first taking the module of the width and then division, the and then we save the scriptable object. And so what we end, end up with is, is essentially this scriptable object that has the color and the UV coordinates of this color. When it comes to the scriptable object itself, it's defined here in this pixel map file, and it's essentially just one object with serialized dictionary, which maps colors to vectors. And a serialized dictionary is, um, I'm pretty sure if you've been using Unity for some time, you probably have an implementation of it somewhere. It essentially allows you to serialize dictionaries. And once this asset is generated, we can use it to import other animations that will have these colors turned into UV coordinates. So if I open again this folder with my walk animation, what I need to do is I essentially I need to save this using the prefix uh, that we expect here. In this case, we expect the file to start with source dot. If I'm gonna go back to a sprite, by the way, this is this walking animation, and I'm gonna save it in the same folder as source dot alice underscore walk. I'm gonna go back to the naming convention in just a second. Now when I save it, go back to Unity, it's gonna be imported. And now our walking animation now doesn't work. And this is because Asset Importer tried to convert this source animation to UV coordinates, but because the source animation still uses normal colors, it cannot find them on the, uh, in the lookup data. And actually the only color that it could find is this leg, which I believe is white, because white is also, this white uh, is also here on the map. So it was able to find only this one color. Now we need to overlay the colors, and the way I do that, essentially, is I simply copy this map, create a new layer, temporarily extend this um, canvas, and just paste it here to have it there, right? And then I make it so that it's um, linked and not editable. And now if I create a new layer, I can simply sample the colors from there and paint them over the animation. Another thing that you could do technically uh, with a sprite is create a palette for this specific map, right? And if you if you adjust the width uh, accordingly, you'll end up with something that looks exactly uh, like this. And now you can use these colors. 
Yeah, now there's uh, pretty much nothing more to it. Uh, you just need to go over this animation and apply this uh, these colors. And I like to start with the left leg because it's the most complex one. And the way I think about this, you can see that these are four different stripes. For me, this is the front of the leg. This is the left side, this is the back side, and this is the right side. Uh, so if, if you were to take a look at this from top, uh, it would be something like this. So at any point you can see like up to three different um, sides of the leg. So this stripe here would be what is uh, the most on edge on this leg. And I'd essentially start from, usually from the middle, because this violet stripe, as I said in the video, uh, represents the knee. So I'd basically, you know, figure out where the knee is, place it here, and then essentially go through the entire animation um, and try to place it where it belongs. And now that I have this reference point that is the knee, I can, you know, go up above the knee and place what I think would be above it. This would actually be probably somewhere here. This is essentially how the process looks like. As I said in the in the pinned comment under the video, it takes me around 30 minutes to do like one animation like this. And then obviously um, other parts of the body are a bit easier. Head actually doesn't change that much throughout the entire animation. Uh, so I can just copy this. Or can I? I think I need to select this layer actually. Yeah, uh, I can just copy this, uh, remove what I don't need, and just overlay it. Right, and this is pretty much it. So uh, I'm not gonna go through the entire thing here. Uh, instead, I have the animation prepared here. So I simply, uh, I'm going to copy this entire layer and just paste it here and uh, go back to this smaller canvas. So now when I save this and go back to Unity, now we actually do see the silhouette of our character. Uh, the asset post processor took care of that. The only thing left to do is to create a shader that's gonna display the map. I'm gonna create the shader for this using uh, the shader graph. Uh, shader graph, um, sprite list shader. I'm gonna call it skin uh, shader. And immediately I'm gonna create a material for it and apply it to the player. Okay, so as you can see, it doesn't work. Uh, and now we can set up this whole shader. So first of all, I'm gonna add the main texture here so that we can actually display it. Um, if we create a variable, right, with reference set to underscore main texture, uh, it's gonna take the texture that's assigned to the sprite renderer and allow us to access it. So I'm gonna just um, sample it and uh, simply display the color for now. I'm gonna maybe display the game view here. So uh, I'm not sure if you can tell on the stream, but we can see the colors uh, here and I can use uh, the alpha value to get the silhouette. And we're essentially where we started, right? This is like the most basic shader that you can have. So now what we need to do is instead of using these values to you know create color, we want to use them to sample another texture. So first I'm going to create a reference to another texture. I'm going to call it skin texture. And before we proceed, I'm going to quickly, I'm going to assign the texture that we've prepared. Uh, so this is the, the default texture. With that set up, uh, we can use the skin texture and sample it in instead. So now uh, the problem is that these values here, they're gonna range from zero to one. These are gonna be floats. Uh, it's not from zero to 255, uh, but zero to one, they are normalized in other word. So first thing that we need to do, I'm gonna combine them into like a two dimensional um, array. First thing, 
uh, we need to multiply them uh, by 255 to go back from this uh, normalized range to our range that we are used to. And then another <laughs> thing that we need to do is use the texture size, which we can access uh, from our uh, skin texture using a node that's called texture size. This will essentially return to us the width and height of, of this texture. I'm going to turn this into an array as well. Right, so the way it works is that on this output, when there is zero, we mean like maximum to the left, for instance. When there is 24, we mean maximum to the right. And this is uh, this is 24 as essentially because the texture size is uh, has 24 pixels uh, of width. But for UV sampling, we need to turn them again to normalized range. And to do that, all we need to do is divide it by this. And now if everything uh, is correct, which I hope it is, you can see that nothing works. Uh, we are sampling colors, but uh, something is a little bit wrong. And the reason for that is that after we multiply these values times 255, we end up on the edge of pixels. We are between, essentially when we have a value of 23, for instance, we are between the 23rd and the 24th pixel, and it results in a very random behavior. So to offset that, all we need to do is add 0 0.5 to this thing. So this way we're gonna move it to the center of a pixel. And now as you can see, uh, the sprite is looking normally again. Uh, and just to prove kinda that it works, I'm gonna go ahead and modify this texture, right? If I add something on it, uh, Unity is gonna reload this texture and here we are. So uh, another thing that people talked about was exporting these UV coordinates immediately from a sprite or from any like pixel art software. And you can do that. You could write probably like an exporter. But what I like about texture post-processor in Unity is that say that I'm going to move this, I want to rearrange this map, right? So I'm going to move it here. And now it stopped working. The lag is not being properly rendered because there's a mismatch between our UV coordinates and our actual map. And with a texture post-processor, all I need to do is edit the map as well. In the same way I edited the skin uh, texture, I just need to edit this. Uh, and Unity will regenerate this lookup texture. So all I need to do is re-import these. And as you can see, it's fixed. Depending on the software that you're using, you know, you'd need to re-export every single animation to readjust the UV coordinates, which may or may not be a problem. Uh, but this is just like one thing that I like about texture post-processor. I'd like to make these streams periodically so that, you know, I release a devlog on, say, Thursday, and then the next Saturday we're going to have a stream like that. I'd simply, you know, gather all the questions from the devlog and then go over them on a live stream on the second channel. So if you're interested in something like that, you can uh, subscribe to this channel. Thank you all so much for participating in the stream. It was amazing. I'll probably see you at some point in the future. Bye-bye.